So if you want to move closer, it, now it's the time. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, first, let me tell you a little bit uh, about the, how this problem appeared in, uh, to me. I did my PhD, a part of my PhD in Mexico with Karchenko, and uh, we worked about quantum groups, uh, right co subalgebras. Then I came back to Brazil and I started work, working with other things. I, I didn't work with him anymore. But then last year in Nicolas event, uh, I, I saw him and he proposed me to come back and work uh, another time with something related to what we did in our PhD. So that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm going to tell you. First, I will start with a few basic definitions, but mostly notations. So, as usual, H, M, U, Delta, Epsilon, and S is a Hopf algebra. Uh, G of H that I will use only G is the group of group-like elements. That is delta of J is J tensor J. Then we have uh, skill primitive elements. I will use this word a lot, so I will just write SP for skill primitive because I will use this a lot. Um, if delta of x is x tensor 1 plus g tensor x. Uh, I will denote by h, h0, the co-radical. And in the case that uh, h is pointed, h0 is k of g. Uh, the co-radical filtration Hn is the inverse image of delta of H Hn minus one, minus 1 plus H0 tensor H. A co-ideal is a subset I such that delta of I is contained in I tensor H plus H tensor I. A bi-ideal is an ideal and co-ideal. And finally, a hope ideal is a bi ideal such that S of I is contained in I. This is uh, very basic, very familiar. So now I will start with a little less familiar definitions. Uh, what do we call a character half algebra? We say that H is a character half algebra if H is generated over KG, uh, where G is commutative,
by elements uh, AI, which are skill primitive, semi invariance. So I already said what is skill primitive. Semi invariant means that uh, G minus one AI G is chi I of G AI for every G in G. Chi I is a character of the group G, is a morphism of the group. Uh, now we call a quantum variable an element xi, which is associated to a group like and a group character, chi i. Uh, we'll consider, we'll call the set of quantum variables X and G of X uh, is the skill group algebra where these variables, they do not commute. And we have a commutation formula with x and g, uh, given this way. Uh, and g in the definition that you provide is that part of the commutative g? Here? Yes. Is that commutative? Yes. G is commutative. Uh, and we finally have a skill commutator. xi xj minus chi i is the character associated to xi, gj is the group like associated to xj. So this is a skill commutator of g of x. Okay. So now I will define the combinatorial rank. But for this, I will need uh, a few theorems to explain to you why this, is, why this makes sense. So first, I present you, it's very familiar. Uh, Theorem from Heinemann Radford. So this theorem says that if we, if we have C and D coalgebras, and phi from C to D, such that uh, co-algebra morphism, such that the restriction of phi to C1, where C1 is this uh, co-radical component defined here. Here I used H because I was referring to H. There I use C1 because I am referring to C is injective. Then <clears throat> we have that phi is injective. This definition of combinatorial rank is from Slava Harchenko. All, all of this I am doing is, is done in his previous works. 
course, he used the results that are not his, but. Then uh, I make a remark that every by ideal has non trivial intersection with C1, where delta of C1 is contained in from the definition. And we have also the theorem of Taft-Wilson also from 74 that says if C is pointed then C1 is spanned by one and skill primitive elements. Okay, so this is classical. Then uh, the corollary that uh, Slava proved in a very old work from, from him and is not recent, it says that every non-zero by ideal I of a pointed Hopf algebra has a non-zero skill primitive element. So, uh, I have to make two remarks that I will use this corollary, which is a consequence of this, and I make two remarks to explain why the definition of combinatorial rank is makes sense. So, remarks. First, skill primitive elements generate a hop ideal. And second, uh, a hop ideal is not necessarily generated by its skill primitives. Uh, in the classical case, this is true. The a hop ideal is generated by its skill primitives. But in general, it, this is not true. So it's not necessarily true. And that's why we think about uh, combinatorial rank of quantum groups. Because in the classical case, the combinatorial rank is, uh, is always one. I will define <laughs> now uh, the sequence that I need to define the combinatorial rank. So we consider J a Hopf ideal of H. We have the following sequence of Hopf ideals. So we start with zero, and then 
we have J1, where J1 is the ideal generated by skew primitive elements of J. Skew primitive elements of J. Sometimes this is all, uh, like I said, in the classical case, the skew primitive already uh, generate the whole uh, Hopf ideal, and this ends. But sometimes this is not all. So J1 is not, this is all contained in J. So J1 may not be the whole J. So what do we do? We define if J1 is not J, then J quotient J1 uh, is a Hopf ideal. And we have this corollary that says it has Q primitive elements. Then we define J2 quotient J1, which is the ideal generated by skew primitive elements of uh, sorry, J quotient J1. Because we're doing a quotient, so maybe uh, a few elements that were not skew primitive will be skew primitive here in this quotient. Now we define J2 as pi minus 1 of J2 J1, where pi is a projection of H on H quotient J1. So we have J2. Then maybe J2 is the whole J, and then we end. Maybe not. If this is not, we have the quotient J1 if J2 is not J, then J3, J2 is the Hopf ideal generated by skew primitives of J. And then we go on until we have a J that is equal a ji that is equal to the whole j. Maybe this never happens. Maybe we have an infinite sequence. But if we do, following this process, this sequence of half ideals stabilizes. If J kappa is equal to J for some kappa. So what is the combinatorial rank? The combinatorial rank is this kappa definition. Well, but now we have to say who is this J. In here, in here, in this construction, J can be any Hopf ideal. But in the combinatorial rank, J is a fixed Hopf ideal. So we have uh, H, a character Hopf algebra. Uh, which is generated by skill primitive semi invariance over J. And we consider phi from GX to H. Then 
the J, the Hopf ideal we consider, is the kernel of phi. So we do this sequence using that J is that kernel. The length kappa of the previous sequence is called combinatorial rank of H. This definition is, as I said, from uh, Slava Harchin. So what can happen here? Two things can happen that makes, uh, make this problem not interesting. One thing is this kernel is uh, zero. Maybe x is exactly uh, g of x, and then the combinatorial rank is zero. We have nothing. Uh, another thing that may happen is that uh, j1 is already the whole kernel. When does this happen? When all skill primitives uh, generate j. Sometimes it happens also, and then it's not not so interesting. I will talk about an example this way. So examples. First, we, we consider the quantum Borel algebra. I will say only the positive part, but these results, they are all valid for uh, the whole quant uh, the whole envelope algebra using the triangular decomposition. The, the so if it's valid for the positive part, it's valid for the, the whole algebra. But I will use only the positive part because I don't have that much time. I consider this as generated by x1, xn, where xi is associated to j i and chi i. Then we have a Cartan matrix, which is associated to this g, and d i a i j equals d j a j i. Then we define Pij as chi i of gj, uh, where Pii is q on the di and Pij Pji is Q on the di a i j, where Q is in the field, K. So this quantum Borel algebra is G of X quotient I, where I is an ideal generated by the Serre relations. The set relations are this way. X i, X j, X j. Mm -hmm. 
xj, this is zero, where xj appears one minus a j i times. And what is G in this case with respect to G? G is a, the co-radical of the algebra. It's a set of, of the group-like elements which are associated to the, the quantum variables. Each quantum variable is associated to uh, a group-like elements, and G is generated by this quantum, and also commutative. Uh, what do we have to see here is that first, the set relations, they are all skew primitive, so this ideal is a Hopf ideal, and this is well defined as a Hopf algebra. Remark. Also, Hartinko proved in general that the set relations are skew primitive. So I is a Hopf ideal, and this is well defined. Then we have the first example, which is not a very good example because it's not interesting, but uh, kappa of UK plus of G is one. Why? Because uh, we, our kernel will be this I, which is generated by skill primitive elements, so we have already J1 containing the, the whole I. So we need interesting examples. Now we talk about the uh, positive part of the Lustig, uh, Frobenius Lustig kernel. How do we define this? We define. Uh, now we have to say that Q also is in the field, but Q is a root of the unity. Because if Q is not a root of unity, this example is exactly the same as the last one. So the interesting case is where Q is a root of unity. Now, we have that this is also G of X, but now quotient lambda, where lambda is a little bigger than I. Lambda is the biggest Hopf ideal. in GX2. This GX2 means polynomials uh, with non-linear and uh, li uh, linear and free terms. Uh, we notice that this is different. There we define I, the ideal, and we prove that I is a Hopf ideal. Here we take lambda, the Hopf ideal. So the first remark is that lambda contains all skill primitive elements of J of X2. Uh, if it's a linear uh, term, it doesn't contain, but if it doesn't have a linear term, it contains Why? Because this uh, each skill primitive element generates a Hopf ideal, so the biggest Hopf ideal contains this Hopf ideal in particular. Why is this important? Because this uh, assures us that the set relations are here.
So now I go to the more interesting examples, example two. We have this quantum group for type AN. This was proved by Hartinko and Alvarez in 2005. Uh, they calculated the combinatorial rank of type AN and this is This number. Then a few years have passed and Slava hmm? N is a uh, type AN. Well, uh, this is interesting. The combinatorial ring is closely related to this N, but they, it's not related at all with this T. And I find this very interesting because the dimension of this quantum group is really related to T. But, hmm? No, no, it has some restrictions. T has, I don't remember the restrictions for each case. I remember the restri restrictions for G2, which is my case, but uh, sometimes it has restrictions. Probably here, uh, not too. Yeah, yeah. But each case has a few, not many restrictions, but but it does not depend on T. And I find this very interesting. Then a few years later, uh, Slava started working again with these things, with his PhD student, Mayra, and they proved the combinatorial rank of type BN, CN, and DN. I would say these results are all from uh, Hartchenko and Mayra Lorena Dias Sosa. Example three, for type BN and CN, they have that kappa of this quantum group is this number. Oh, by this I denote the biggest integer uh, less than this number, because this number, of course, is not always integer. This is for type BN and CN, and for type DN, they found Plus one. Okay, so then they finished this this case, and uh, it was left to do the exceptional cases, but they didn't work in this problem anymore. And he, uh, we saw each other in the Nicolas event last year, and he talked to me, "Why don't you work on this? Because it's the it's the quantum group that you work on your thesis, so you have a little familiarity. And I thought, oh, okay, interesting. I, I will think about it. And now I will tell you about a little bit about what we are doing. So our problem is type G2. So this is a joint work uh, 
with Vanusa Gilevski, which is my PhD student, and Carolina Hens, which also is a professor in Porto Alegre, and she's here. Our problem is to calculate kappa of type G2. Uh, I will tell you just a little bit about how this algebra is. So we have now only two quantum variables, only x1 and x2. And from the Cartan matrix of G2, we obtain that P11 is Q to the 3, P22 is Q, and P12, P21 is Q minus 3. Uh, the PBW basis of this quantum group, which we already knew was in my PhD thesis, is A, B, C, D, E, and F. A is simply X1. B is X1, X2. C is the, the super letter that makes all complicated, which is X1, X2, X1, X2, X2. So this is complicated. D X1, X2, X2. For E, we have another X2. And F is simply X2. The PBW basis is in this order. We can always, no, I'm sorry, it's in the opposite order. First we write F, then E, then D, and if we want to make the super letters commute, the, the basis elements commute, we have to use the relations. To calculate the combinatorial rank, we have to calculate delta, which is really hard. Christian also, uh, here has a, a work with Slava that calculates the delta for these elements, and it's already a lot of work. Then to calculate the delta for these elements on the T, I will explain why we have to do this. It's really, really a lot of calculation. So our conjecture is that kappa of uq of uh, g equals 3 for type g2. I didn't write the, the restrictions on t. Here his, t has to be uh, bigger than 5 and not 6. It can be 5, it cannot be 6, and then 7, 7, 8, 9. We have no restrictions anymore. How do we do this? The first part, we have to see that lambda is generated by the Serre relations and B on the T, this T is fixed, where B is in the PBW basis. 
This basis is not uh, the only PBW basis. We can have another basis, but this is, has an important property which makes this true. I, I don't have time to explain this now, but we have that these elements of this basis uh, on the T, they are skew primitive. No, they are on, del on lambda. Then we have to find out when they are skew primitives, because this we already know they are skew primitives. So we say that. Lambda one, okay. then second, we see that lambda one is the set relations A to the T and F to the T. Then lambda two is B to the T and D. And finally, lambda 3 is C and uh, C and E. And then we finish the all the elements in lambda and lambda 3 is the whole lambda, so kappa is 3. I say conjecture because this is not, uh, we haven't finished this. We have done this for t equal 5. We, we weren't able to generalize this yet. We are still working on bt in general. This is very hard, a lot of calculations. We are trying to use uh, tools not to do all by hand. But we, already, we are already sure that this is the combinatorial rank. Why? Because we, we know for the other examples that they, are, they don't depend on T. So we think in this case, it, it won't depend on T also. And, uh, and we also did a, a few calculations for T6. So we are very sure that the result is true. It's true, but still not done yet. We're still working and hopefully last year, uh, next year it will be ready. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. We proved that for t equals 5, that this here is easy for every t. But here, uh, in this case, that b on the 5 is here, d on the 5 is here, and this also for 5. But this, here we don't need the t equal 5. This, this part is not difficult. Mm-hmm. We're very sure, yes. Yeah, yes, because uh, for uh, two, it's never, but this quantum group is a little bit more complicated because it has the triple line. Uh, if we take the Dinkin diagram, it's the only one that has the triple line, so, yeah, but it's not two. Uh, F4, not yet, but maybe, if it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but what happens if you change your basis? If I change the basis? Well, the skewed primitive elements may change. An element that was skewed primitive in one basis may not be skewed primitive in another basis. No, I don't think so. I think it doesn't depend on the... To be skewed primitive doesn't depend on the basis. Uh -huh. This element would always look like that. I I can check because I, I already have another basis of the. Mm -hmm. It's it's not very difficult. I used it in my PhD thesis, so we, I can check. Or for a, for a. And are you checking by hand? 
<laughs> we check by hand. I said uh, not by hand. We do everything by hand. We don't use the computer. What I mean not doing by hand, I mean using tools that makes this calculation easier. But, but we are not using the computer. Why not? <laughs> because I don't know how to use for these things. Mm. That it should be what? <laughs> no, no. Yes, yes. In general, that it doesn't depend on t. There's no theorem of this. Hmm? Yes. So while we see in the calculations, it does not depend. But. Thank you.